everybody, Denise Mazzola from Everything Dog, and today's 10 minute tip is going to be about traveling with your dog. I want to preface that this is not about like the ultimate safety way to travel with your dog, right? The, the best way to travel with your dog is, if, is in a travel crate that is specifically designed for the car that's metal and it will survive crashes, okay? So that's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about a way to control your dog. A lot of times my clients will say, oh, my dog is like trying to get in the front seat with me or, you know, is jumping into the front seat or is racing back and forth and window to windows or whatever. And I will often tether Geo in the car because unfortunately he tends to eat my lunch if I don't have it contained. So he's either tethered or he's in a crate or my lunch is in a crate so that the dog can't get that. All right, so the two leashes that I use for this is, one is just a chain leash. So if I'm transporting a dog that's not really well known to me, then I use this leash so that they can't chew through the leash. Yes, they can chew through the handle, and I've had that happen sometimes, but it's, you know, it's very helpful to have a chain leash. Now with Geo, I could use his regular leash because he will not chew through it. So the key is to um, find, and I'm gonna show you in here where we can tether. You're going to find a place that you can tether your dog, secure them to, so that they can not get in the front seat or not get to the places that you want them to get. If you have a dog that bolts out of their car that has not been taught impulse control, right, so this is not a mistake. He's a little closer to the edge than I'd like, but I've worked a lot with Geo to be in the middle of the car and to wait there for food so that when I open the hatch or I open the doors, he's not charging out. I've put the value on being in the, in the car. And we did an episode on impulse control, so you can take a look at that. Okay, so let's move around to the sides of the car, and I'm gonna show you in this old Honda Pilot how and where I tether him to. So I'm gonna show you with the um, chain leash. Uh, Gio, get in the front, in the front, go on, hang on, get in the front. Wait, wait. So right here, this is usually pushed in. This is one, one of the things that I tether them to and they're on, they're on both sides. And how I do that is I just hook, I put this, the clasp through this and it fits. And then I put it, I pass it through the handle and it's the perfect length. Okay, so he can be right here he can be over there. He could jump out of the car if he didn't have that impulse control. So be aware of that. You know, you want your dog to jump out and hang themselves, okay? But my goal is so that when I'm driving, he cannot be all up in, up in the front. He's not gonna be stepping on my things on the passenger seat or he's not gonna be eating. Okay, release, come on back. Good boy. So, right, so we just, come here, turn your head. I just clip him to his collar, and now he knows exactly how far he can be. Okay, get back in the front. In the front. So that's a new command. I've never been told to get in the front. I always to get out. So the issue with the longer, so this metal leash is, is, I think it's about four feet, which is, in my opinion, perfect. I can use his cloth leash, but one of my issues with this is it's too long was it six feet he's always knotted or something right but now you know now he's going to be hanging out in the front and i don't like that so much so i like the chain leash here okay so let me show you one more thing from this this side of the car if you don't have those little hooks for some reason or you can't find those little hooks then you're going to use the headrest geo get in the front front I don't know, that's a new term. And exactly the same way, I'm gonna use the headrest. And I, again, I would suggest the shorter four footer because now you can see where he can get. So he could stand here and kind of be between the seats a little bit closer than when I have him hooked. Again, you know, your dog can get out. So if you open this door and he jumps out, he's not gonna get away, but that's not gonna be a pleasant experience on his neck. So always practice that impulse control and use a tether for a backup situation as well. I think most cars have headrests. All right, now let's go to the van and um, I'm gonna show you in there how I secure a dog 
So in the van, we've taken all the seats out of our van because we're not transporting people or kids. It's just the two of us and the dogs or stuff for classes or whatever. So the van has a lot of great options for how to tether a dog. Um, and so in the back here, under this mat, there is a hook. There's several of them, and I'm sure that they're used to hook the um, seats into, but since we don't have the seats in, it's the same idea. I'm gonna put the clasp and then through the handle. Gio. Right, and then he can be tethered that way. So again, he can't get in the front. He can get right here. He's got plenty of room side to side. Again, he can get out on this side if he didn't have that nice impulse control where he's been taught to stay in the center. But this is a great way to just like, particularly puppies, or uh, maybe you got a dog that's nervous and anxious and paces back and forth or whatever the reason, um, you can use this kind of a tether. And again, you can also use your cloth leash, but for me, that just gives him too much space and then he, he will be in the front seat if I don't want him to be there. If we're traveling on a long trip, I don't tether him because I have things secured in the car and, and if he wants to sit in the front of the passenger seat and lay down up there, I'm okay with that. Um, okay. So let me just review. Today's 10 minute tip is just some quick, easy ways to tether your dog in a car so that they're not jumping in the front seat, um, so they're not eating your food, so they're not pacing back and forth or getting into things that you don't want. Tethering them to their collar in this way in the car is clearly not going to keep them safe if you have a car accident, okay? I want you to understand that's not what I am suggesting. If you are worried about car accidents, then I would suggest you go online and you find the, I don't know what they're called, car safe um, dog crates. They're um, more expensive. They will survive a car crash. They're heavy metal and they're not gonna implode or explode when you have a car accident. So that would be the ideal way to always travel with your dog, just like we wear seatbelts. That's the best thing. If you don't wanna do that or you can't do that or whatever the reason is, then tethering is a nice solution to managing your dog in the car. Uh, a step sort of above this would be just a regular crate in your car, whether it's a metal crate or a very kennel, that will also keep them from pacing back and forth. If you have a dog that gets car sick, I would absolutely suggest they're in a crate. So one, if they get car sick, it's in the crate and not all over your car. Uh, if you have a dog that's reactive, they should be in a crate and you can cover your crate with a sheet or something else so they can't be looking out the windows and get themselves all worked up about things. Okay, you guys. So today's, this week's 10 minute tip is all about securing your dog in the car so that you can have a better and more enjoyable car ride. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page, tell all your friends, share it if you want. We'd love to have you do that. And I will look forward to seeing you next week on our next 10 minute tip. Have a great day.